Good news, this week I am not identifying as the Archbishop of Canterbury, replacing Justin Welby, but I do want to focus on something that I've actually been talking about. I was probably the first to start talking about it about a year ago. What I call uh, this, this huge increase in people on benefits. Some might describe it as sick note Britain because we have got a major growing crisis and this week was the week that the Office for Budget Responsibility amongst many other things they actually highlighted the issue and their forecast for the future and the numbers are extraordinary and first of all of course the, it's very important in a developed mature democratic society it's the sign of a decent civilised society that we have a proper decent welfare system that looks after the vulnerable, looks after the sick, looks after those genuinely struggling. That's what we've been good at. And we've had that system. Many other nations, of course, have one. But what we don't want is a system where actually it ends up being abused and, in a sense, working against itself. And my concern now is that a decent system, well-intentioned, is now being taken advantage of to a scale that is growing and growing. And it's very simple, really. If it doesn't pay you to work relative to being on benefits, then don't be surprised if a load of people decide they'll stay at home, they won't go to work with all the extra effort that involves. Or they might stay at home, collect benefits and then go and work for cash on the black market. I think the size of this is way bigger than most people in Westminster have any idea about. And the few that might have an idea about it didn't talk about it. It's quite extraordinary that the Tories, who've been in power now for some 13 plus years, they came to power on a great slogan. It sounds very good, doesn't it? Welfare to work. That was the slogan 13 years ago. And 13 years later, what have they achieved? I'll tell you what they've achieved. They've achieved exactly the opposite. We've now got a system of work to welfare at the cost of the rest of us. I mean, that is a uniquely unbelievable, incompetent, woeful achievement from any political party, any government. But that's what the Tories have achieved. It's nothing short of an absolute scandal, the waste of talent of people on out-of-work benefits who could be at work, who should be at work. And not only is it, of course, a waste of talent, it's a massive waste of your and my cash as taxpayers. The numbers are so stark, they are so shocking. You've got a situation where supposedly we've got a labour shortage and yet we've got a record population and a record number of people on out-of-work benefits. And I'm afraid to say, and I know this will upset some, but I suspect we've got a record level of idleness, of abuse of the system. And last week, I upset some people by talking about the abuse of, again, the well-intentioned, and in many cases, excellent motability scheme. But it's being abused to a huge degree. I'll be talking about that another time. We're doing more work on it. But the OBR this week said that the number of people on out-of-work benefits, this is out-of-work, not in work, out-of-work benefits, has risen to 5.3 million people. That's one in eight, one in eight of the working age population from 16 to 64. Just think about that for a moment. But if you think that's bad, in cities like Manchester, Birmingham, Glasgow, Liverpool, it's not one in eight, it's one in five. So forget all these daft figures that are parroted by politicians saying unemployment's very low at 3.8 or 4%. That number is a complete and utter joke. It's a farce. It's calculated by the IFS asking about 40,000 people once a month whether or not they're looking for, worse, looking for work. It's totally and utterly irrelevant 
and yet politicians still use it. The only number to focus on is how many people in the country and how many people of working age on out-of-work benefits. And it's at about a record high. The Tories, they Labour, they don't want to talk about it, they won't recognise it. In the last three months alone, to the end of April, this is the latest data, another 440,000 people started claiming benefits for medical reasons. So that the total now claiming benefits for medical reasons is 2.6 million people. 40% of the new claimants are claiming mental health issues. Now, as we all know, I've said it before, I'll say it again, and it'll upset people again. Serious mental health is a terrible condition. Serious depression is an awful, awful condition. Dreadful illness. But my concern, and I think the concern of many of you listening and watching this morning, is that that terrible condition is being used, abused and hijacked by the feckless and the idle as a way of claiming benefits. And I'll tell you why, because of course, a bit like back pain and a bit like long COVID, it's the hardest to prove or disprove. When I was running a big business, I was always a bit suspicious when a sick note came in claiming back pain. Now I know, again, genuine back pain, serious, horrific, but you see where I'm going with this. And I'll keep saying it so that I don't upset too many people. Yes, mental health is a serious condition, but it is what is now being used and abused in so many ways. The cost of this is absolutely huge. There's about 5,000 new sickness claims every single day. That is double the pre-pandemic rate. And almost all of those are accepted by the Department of Work and Pensions. So here's the number that is also scary. Over the next four years, the DWP and the OBR is saying there'll be another 1.4 million people claiming sickness benefits. Another 1.4 million. Hang on. I thought the NHS was the envy of the world. I thought we were supposed to be living longer, getting healthier. How can that be? How can that work when you're forecasting another 1.4 million people on sickness benefits? This is tens of billions of pounds every single year. And I'm afraid to say, I think too many people are jumping on the gravy train, jumping on the bandwagon. It's that, it's that same thing, you've got to make work pay. And if it pays more to stay at home, don't be surprised what happens. So what's the Tory answer? Their answer is to write these 5.3 million people off, ignore them, and just bring in ever more high levels of lawful immigration to equal or exceed last year's 1.2 million people. They want more cheap, low-skilled immigration in order to fill low-paid, low modest-paid jobs. They say it'll bring down inflation. In other words, disgracefully, they actually want to depress the wages of British workers. That's their solution. Labour's solution? Silence. Can you hear that? Utter silence. But that's not surprising, is it? So the OBR, they're forecasting a net 250,000 increase in long-term immigration. The reality is, the last few years, it's been double or treble that. And I think it'll remain at these levels. The sums involved are absolutely huge. Imagine if you actually made work, make work pay so that a million or two million of the 5.3 realise that actually, with help and support, you learn more at the end of each week if you get back into work. That would save tens and tens of billions of pounds of taxpayers' cash. That's the smart thing to do. That's the right thing to do. Instead, the politicians are heading in exactly the opposite direction. Surely we can all agree that actually work is a good thing. It's good for your mental health. It's good for your dignity, your sense of achievement. It's a great example 
to your family, to your children. It's good for your local community. It shows that you're contributing that sense of achievement. And of course, ultimately, it's good for the economy. Work is a great thing. So let's make it pay. Because at the end of the day, you know, money talks. I'll repeat again before too many people get upset. A civilised society, of course. You want a welfare system that catches the genuinely vulnerable, the genuinely ill, the genuinely sick. But what you don't want is a system that is so open to abuse that, guess what? It gets abused. There's nothing kind or compassionate, words that the lefties love to use. There's nothing kind or compassionate about leaving people to sit at home when they could be at work, to wasting all that talent, that opportunity, when they could get fitter and get a job. It's better for everybody. And there needs to be a bit of carrot and stick to this, in my view. If you can work, you should work. But be very, very clear, this growing culture of workless sickness culture, it's dangerous. We all want it sorted. Taxpayers want it sorted. It is simply unfair if you pay people to sit at home who could be and should be at work. The economy needs it sorted. Otherwise, it's financially ruinous. The idea that another 1.4 million people are going to go on sickness benefits in the next four years in an economy where we pride ourselves, where apparently we've got a great health system and we're living longer. So that means surely we're healthier. Something doesn't compute. The computer says no. Maybe the computer's blown up, I don't know. We'll be talking about computer models shortly. Some others may not want to talk about this issue. I know it's emotive. I know it upsets people. But trust me, I'm going to keep talking about it until we get it sorted. And with that, here endeth my Sunday sermon.